Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, yeah, we, we do have a diverse audience across here. So as you see from the slide, it's again a Thursdays without Franco. So last week it was myself and Stuart Coggins hosting. Um, this week I'm hosting again. I'm going to hand over to a couple of others in our team. So one of the things we did plug in the session last week was the World Innovation Day, which was running over the weekend. Um, we thought this would be a good opportunity to be able to, you know, have a look and see what was done. Um, as Fauzi alluded, um, not a lot of sleep. Um, we had people from across the, the world trying to actually support this. So in our team, that was mostly driven by Jason Lowe up in Brisbane. Um, as you heard, he was sort of traveling on a plane and backwards and forwards as well. So yeah, a bit of difficulty there. Fauzi down in Melbourne and Patrick here in Sydney with myself. And, and, and I must admit, um, it's been nice to have almost six days of sunshine in Sydney, wouldn't you say, Patrick? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was able to, you know, in between the hackathon and everything, just be in a park and be on Discord and actually enjoy some sun for a change. Oh, yeah. I think we've had three months of rain, if not more. It's been yeah. raining since November. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm going to hand over to Jason just to run the, the rest of the segue in terms of what was done with that hackathon. And we're going to get some great feedback from Fauzi and Patrick, how they supported the teams that were out there. Over to you, Jason. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Darren, for that intro. And um, just to give a couple of stats um, here, and yeah, I'm Jason, this is Fauzi and, and Patrick, whatever way the screen is actually looking. Um, it was interesting um, that over that weekend, there was, this is the second time that this has been run. Uh, so this is, we did this last year, this, this time, uh, around about that April, and it coincides with the World Creativity and Innovation Day. Uh, so we couldn't actually do the whole name, but it's actually, um, we shortened it to the World Innovation Day Hackathon. Um, ultimately, from the numbers, there's probably about 2,500 people all jammed in Discord for uh, four days. So started on the Friday and then finished on Tuesday. And as I say, it's global. So there were teams across the world, not just in Australia, but... Uh, great representation in uh, Pakistan, India, a um, couple um, into the US as well in UK, um, plenty of people around. So, but one of the things I, I wouldn't mind just showing up on the screen, Darren, I'm going to just take this away. I am going to um, just share a short clip to just create a bit of expectation about what's, uh, what this thing is about. So I think that one of the things that we would see as really important for the future is using technologies to get uh, education across to people who perhaps are not, uh, you know, who are going to fall behind, who almost mm -hmm. certainly have fallen behind. And all the advances we've made with regard to girls' education is, is now in regression. One of the areas that we need to strengthen, and, and maybe others do as well, is analysis of that data. In other words, you can collect it, and you can have all the, um, the hardware and software in the world in relation to it, but ultimately you need a, a human brain to connect up uh, that rich information and, and, and transform it into policy and to implementing practices on the ground. So that was a bit of a, uh, just a, a glimpse as far as the, the type of event it was. And it was really interesting in terms of um, it wasn't just data scientists or people doing engineering. There were uh, people doing blockchain and NFTs. And um, Fauzi, one of the things that sort of popped up, because you were there, um, was these three challenges that we have up on screen. So um, what, what's your take on, on what, they, what the teams actually had to do? Yeah, no, um, firstly, they had to find a team, uh, <laughs> which was, uh, uh, some, some of them was, were still looking for teams on, on, I think, on the Sunday night. But when we talk about the four days, I think what we've got to realise is in, the t in terms of the application, developing the application, the rapid build, um, some of the teams only had about a day and a half. And the outcomes that were produced, uh, I was amazed. 
I mean, it's my first time as a hackathon, let alone a mentor in a hackathon. Um, so we had to guide them. And, and I think Patrick will speak more to this in terms of starting from scratch of how they engage within the, their teams um, through to the ideations and then um, come up uh, with the rapid build and what technology they were going to use. And as um, Jason said that, you know, they had the options of using uh, Oracle Apex for Tech for Good, the challenge one, uh, which was surrounding the one of the uh, sustainable development growth or 17 around uh, data partnerships for public good. Yeah. Um, so that was that was interesting. And, it, and it, it just in general, was in the ideation phase, it was just trying to pull them back, even though they were working on maybe uh, poverty or reducing poverty or increasing economic growth. So, um, so yeah, that, that, that pulled them back. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and Patrick, you would have seen through your background, not even the, the tech side, but what you've done with startups prior to joining Oracle, then that you saw, you know what that process looks like. So what did you see in terms of what teams did and, and maybe um, highlights, uh, maybe one of the teams in terms of what challenge and how did they go about doing it? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Jason. So I, I think in terms of the ideation process um, and when anyone starts a startup or they can they do blue sky thinking, seeing what ultimately they want to achieve. And you kind of need to hone that in and go, okay, well, you've only got a weekend. How, what can you achieve then? What can, what can be feasible to, to accomplish? And then also telling them, hey, you don't have to build out everything. As long as you come up with, um, again, a feasible strategy on how this can be achieved, then that's a good way forward. So... Um, I, on those two teams, one was um, asking me about how do I manage um, people in multiple time zones and coming to a consensus um, so we can get started as a group. And that in itself is challenging. I don't think many of the developers in the team actually had an issue with Apex. It was all the other non-technical stuff that they were more, more or less facing difficulty because that's usually the starting roadblocks that happen in the hackathons. So most of the time, we'll, um, I'd recommend them to uh, divvy up um, ideas, come back, reach a consensus, and then um, eliminate it as a group altogether. So there's no one person that's like taking leadership or anything like that. Everyone's working together. And then you can then evaluate what strengths you have. So you can then develop um, uh, to one of the challenges that they've picked. So. One of the startups, uh, sorry, one of the hack, uh, groups that was working on um, the, the product was um, building a blockchain solution to address all of the um, SDGs. And um, it seemed initially lofty and I asked them, well, hey, like, I know that you wanna use blockchain, but I've heard this a billion times from other startups. Like, is this gonna be a gimmick or not? Like, does this have a utilitarian purpose? And it, it did, which was great. So ideally they're wanting to focus on um, communities, especially in the arts and the, the art space, like artists that are struggling to um, find rental spaces and things like that to then match up to like-minded people to then align based on the SDGs, um, who they are and then come to smart contracts to then create uh, rental agreements. And then on top of that, um, tokenize some of um, the engagements in form of token, like in, in form of loyalty points that could be redeemed for additional services. So um, when you engage with a lot of um, these groups, or at least this one in particular, it was going, you can pitch this, but how do you make sure that you can lead to some form of initial adoption rather than say a cold turkey change from, okay, now you... Um, go onto this platform, you then have to go through something called pancake swap, buy tokens, swap them over. Um, like how do you ease these people in if you were going to be pitching this as a real startup? Yeah. So yeah, the um, there's some crazy ideas. And I think randomly with the 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 strangers that are forming teams, then it was very much that kind of process. And and Falzi, when you when you on that latter half, you mentioned that. It, 
once they because the problems are so big it doesn't leave them much time to actually build anything some of the teams actually start with build and then need to go back but what do you see from a uh from an apex perspective because we we use that as our bonus points and hey let's do that so what do you see in terms of their process but what thing what things in apex did you see them use more, more often than not yeah a lot a lot of it was uh, the login screen uh, <laughs> uh, they got frustrated in having to keep on logging into the, the you know whenever they ran they, they had to log in so authentication so that was one of them so do you want me to show you how, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Bring something up on screen i'll share that screen too so and the other one that that uh came across that i found interesting and i learned from it as well was um, the, you know, if, if, if people went off and develop uh, app, one application, another part of the team develop a second application, how do you actually link them together? So I've got a very boring, two boring applications. Uh, application three, can you see my screen, by the way? Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. Application three. So if I go in and log into application three, that's a login screen that they want to get rid of. Uh, and then they wanted to, uh, for example, log into one team actually wanted to log into multiple applications. So obviously they've, they've, they've had several people working on multiple applications. And the way I, as an example of that, you'll see if I drop down the hamburger bar, there's nothing in there. But I've also got a link to the top right uh, to the application four. Uh, and if I click on that link, again, the log on screen will come on and you log in and that's the application. So that was a simple basic of linking one application to second. The other next question, logical question is, then how do I get back? If my application three was the main application, how do I get back to that? So it's just doing the, the reverse of that. So I, what I'll very quickly show is how we did that. Um, so if I go to, uh, let me go application three. Um, the other thing is I had it on the menu list. Uh, we could have actually also had it in the, the bottom left. So I'll go to the fourth application um, and go and uh, go to the shared components. In the shared components, I will go to the navigation menu instead of the bar list and we'll just grab Application three, give me a second. Let me just go back to share the screens. Grab the URL of application three. And uh, in my navigation menu, I'm just going to add that link to that. So I'll create an entry. Uh, we'll put in to app three, it's going to be a URL and the URL is going to be this. It should be okay. I'm not sure why that page is coming up. Yeah, that's bad. So now if I just very quickly log out and start that again, I'm going to sign in, application four, sign in, and I'll get rid of that one in soon. So there's no links on the menu list. We should find the link back to application three on our menu on the left hand side, and that will go back. So, how do I get rid of? Let me just go sign out again. Go back to the application um, of application three. Uh, to get rid of the having to keep on logging into the screen. So this is the one thing that we were constantly asked about. Uh, and we, what we did was just create another authentication scheme. Click through the wizard. Uh, we named it as no auth. Chose that option, created that. And now that's the, the existing current authentication. And if we go in now to log into application three, link to app four, there's no login screen. And we could do the same. Uh, we 
because we're already logged in, we could do the same uh, again to app three as well. That was that was the two main ones, and then there were others as well that that maybe we at another stage we can go through. Yeah, the, the, there was plenty of different things so I see, and, and and to be honest, there was build concerns. Oh no, not no login, no authentication. There's I suppose there's other ways of doing single sign on. Uh, using Google as a social authentication uh, and, and having, having those kind of things. So that's definitely a conversation that we can have further on. And um, um, I definitely saw a lot of um, other examples of, and, we, and we've shown in previous Thursdays with Franco, things like using JSON, using GeoJSON, using the REST data services as APIs. Because, uh, someone builds a React uh, application and using the REST APIs into the database. Um, Patrick, anything from your side that you saw in terms of what people were using Apex for? Yeah, so um, in the instance of um, one of the groups, they're all using Airtable um, beforehand and they're like, oh, we don't want to use Apex because we don't know what it is and we've used Airtable, but I convinced them and converted them over to go to Apex. So I said, look, you've built a... You've built a good um, prototype so far on Airtable, but what can we make that look like on Apex? And then setting up the migration pathway to import all of the tables over to um, Apex so they can begin structuring the data. So one particular tool that I've loved is the data loader, yeah. is um, being able to just upload all of that information, um, be able to start off with a couple of reports, make sure that the data is there, and that was most of the time what I'd recommend most of the groups is don't go into rabbit holes with Apex. It's You can get into that quite easily. Just go back to very similar to how you would create the pitch decks. Mm -hmm. You have 10 slides, you know what the topics are, you know what how much time you need to talk about them. Do something very similar with Apex, set up your storyboards like beforehand, engage in the group, understand what each page does and how it functions. So. Um, most of the time I get them to upload the data, throw it into the, um, set it up as reports so they can see it mm -hmm. and then go create the other pages as to what they're trying to mock up. So um, if they run out of time, they've at least set up a stage, a staging site on Apex as to how this would function. Yeah. 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 Um, and what I'll show you, that there's a couple of teams that, I'm, that I found that was quite cool. Um, and let me just, have have a quick look. So this one's an interesting one. Um, this is the team uh, Coral Gardeners. Uh, um, that, that's what they call themselves. And one of the things that they were very focused on is uh, the environmental and coral bleaching. And that's where they they had all these different sites of these reefs, and they had data sets that uh, identified which ones had um, a higher level of, of bleaching over a longer period of time. So even clicking on one of these things, then you can then see um, see what does it look like in terms of some of the data. So this is standard functionality, but it was quite powerful that they were able to look at that. And then once from as part of their scenario, they then say, okay, for someone that's doing more ecotourism then and they want to buy and invest in NFTs, then 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 what is the price and where can I go and who can I contact and how do I actually create that, uh, that connection to uh, a problem and a specific SDG, the kind of impact. And then um, one of the things that they were looking at as part of challenge one was these partnerships. So um, how do we actually bring these partners together? So very similar to what you're saying before, Patrick, around that storyboard and how do you actually... Uh, create a very uh, impactful way of telling your story. So um, there's another one where they did around co uh, compost and recycling. So the team didn't actually pull this together end to end, but um, each of these pictures were actually sent off to a, uh, a Kaggle notebook and they did their machine learning to identify the product. And then from that product, they then actually... Um, created a, um, the ability to look at the accuracy of identification and then who could actually help with that recycling or that composting 
of that product. So they link that information back into Apex as well. Um, and the last one that I'll show is around uh, donors and providing aid across uh, different areas of the world. Um, this is a multi, uh, multi portal or multi user portal where this is for aid workers. This is for people that are needing aid and this is for aid providers as in the organizations. So they created this, uh, this one place for everyone to connect everyone in, um, which is another example of that SDG 17, uh, which is all about those global partnerships. So um, fantastic we were able to see these kind of teams come together. Uh, strangers in a lot of these cases at the, on that Friday. And then from there, uh, get to the outcome of delivering something, but also creating that video. There's, there's going to be a list of videos that we'll share, uh, that we'll collect, on, that already are there on YouTube, uh, but we'll collect them all and we'll share them out for everyone. Um, so at the end of this, um, Fauzi, Patrick, any last, last comments before we hand it off to Darren? Yeah, um, I've actually got a suggestion. Um, it would be good to archive these, these Apex developments for the future, mm. um, mainly because if we engage additional hackathons, they want some ideas to see how Apex actually performs and what's been ideated. Mm. Um, that will give a lot of encouragement and enthusiasm to the, the groups as to like, oh, I can actually do it on this. Wow. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the Apex um, example applications that we have are more standardized towards, I guess, um, enterprise purposes. But how can we do something that's um, deviating from that a bit um, and aligned more to the hackathons in the future? Because, um, again, I don't want to see another Airtable used again, but um, <laughs> like Apex is really powerful, especially for rapid prototyping. Yeah, fantastic. Fauzi, any last words from you? Yeah, leading on from what Patrick was saying, um, I think some of the teams, it just clicked when I said, look, this isn't the end. You've got Apex for free so you can continue to develop it uh, even after the hackathon. And they went, oh, really? Um, so, so that was something as well that was really good to, to hear back. So, Fantastic. So thank you, Falzi. Thank you, Patrick, for, for joining Thursday without Franco. Um, and appreciate your comments. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jason.